what can you tell us about Midnight Sky? I believe George Clooney directed this as well as starring in it. Uh, it's set about uh, 20 years in the future, and there's been some kind of catastrophe that's just written off in, in screen text, not really explained what it is. But basically, the planet is irradiated to the point where most of humanity is destroyed, though some can find underground shelters. Meanwhile, there's a, a crew surveying a heretofore unknown moon of Jupiter for potential colonization, and they're returning to Earth to give their report, not knowing what's happened. So Clooney, the scientist who discovered that moon, is in an outpost, I believe, in Greenland or something. He's trying to contact the ship to tell them to turn around, basically. And meanwhile, he runs into a mute girl who seems to have been left behind, and he takes her with him to try to go to the next nearest outpost with a stronger si radio signal, stronger satellite signal. And of course, it, it becomes... It becomes a survival film on his end and kind of a sci-fi survival, but also hope infused, like like melding of 2001 and Alien on the, sh on the ship as it's approaching Earth. I thought it was, for me, I, I liked it. I, one, one thing that I'm a sucker for is uh, production design and style. And uh, I also think Clooney is a very good director of actors. He's got such credibility. He's been around forever. And he really knows how to talk to actors and how to work with them. He has a good cast here. I think everybody, like on the ship you've got, is it Felicity Jones and David O. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, I can't pronounce his last oh, name. Oh, Yeah, I believe it's... Yes, thank you. He played Martin Luther King in, uh, in, in Selma. Really strong actors, really cool special effects. Now, there were some things, uh, the, what I would say I wasn't... I'm not saying I wasn't crazy about, but there were some cer certain elements that I guessed because, you know, I've seen a movie before, and uh, I think most people who are a little bit movie savvy probably will guess these things as well. But other than that, I, I liked it's kind of it's a little bit of a slow burn at times. And um, it's got this very sort of stoic approach to it. Um, so, like, you, I mean, you compare it to 2001, it's, it does it does have a little bit of a Kubrickian flair to it. There's a very fatalistic approach to it, which I did appreciate. Uh, like, like, like you, you knew there was not going to be some kind of Deus Ex Machina to save the day in the, in, in this movie. Like, like we were going to go for, within the world that they've created, they were going to go for the most realistic, i.e., probably most depressing ending of this. And I do appreciate that. And yeah, and yeah, some of the special effects worked really well. There, there's, there's a scene when Lofthouse, that that's uh, Clooney's character, and the young girl named Iris, they're heading to the to the next place, and there's this gorgeous aurora borealis that, that that was done entirely in post on the the spaceship there there's this almost kind of like quasi holodeck effect where people can basically live in their home videos which i really loved and uh even even when they're on the earth in these in these outposts the computers basically kind of look like how computers might look 20 years from now as opposed to something just completely completely sci-fi or somehow just a slightly enhanced version of what we already have now, which we know is going to be outdated by them. Like, like they, they were able to find that balance. And that, that's a credit to the, to the visual effects team. That's a credit, credit to, the, uh, to the production design team. Because like you, I'm, I'm very much a sucker for that stuff as well. Where you liked the film is where, I, is where I get the marginal thumbs down here because Clooney does not do well with space movies. Like he's done like four so far and none of, the, none of them have been spectacular um th i think the highest rated one would have been gravity and gravity kind of suffers from the same problem as this does in that there's some really great visuals in service to an elementary plot and like every twist in this movie is guessable from the first five minutes there there, there really are no surprises especially once they start doing flashbacks to try to inform you as, as to what's going on it's like i didn't need the flashback i know i already know who's who in this in this thing so I was hoping that the film would challenge me just a little bit more from a story standpoint, because to me, that's always the core of a great movie. Like it's, it's always, it's acting is, is number one, then writing and directing and then everything else. So I was like, and, and if the story falls short, that's where I kind of tune out. There are some truly dazzling visuals in this film, but it's, it's in service to a script that feels like it was written by a 13 year old. So uh, that's where I, that's where I checked out. I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be that harsh about it, but uh, I do I do see some 
uh, chinks in the armor as far as some of the stories and some of the guess the story elements and, and the the guessable stuff in it, but uh, that didn't deter it from me. So I would definitely say, uh, especially if you're a sci-fi nut and you love like space and you're into science um, and you want to see George Clooney not be the George Clooney part in something because he's that very w- different in this. That was uh, that was quite refreshing. I will, I will give credit for that. He's very reserved. He takes a back seat to a lot of the proceedings. He's much more of an observer and a reactionary character than a proactive one. Uh, that that and that's a huge departure for a career leading man such as him. So yeah, that that's that 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 is one of the finer points of the film. I will give it that. One of the things that I really liked about it was it was something I hadn't really seen him do before, and it was not the you know uh, smile and shoot a gun and kiss a girl kind of leading man thing. There's no smarm. There, there, there there's no weird one liners. That's why like I do like this better than Gravity in that respect. I like it better than Gravity as well, just because Gravity's got some again amazing visuals um but i yeah i i I like i like this better just because i thought it was something different and you didn't have a wise quacking charming uh leading man uh guy because he in that because he has like no character in that movie he's just playing the george clooney part exactly kind of thing whereas in this he's playing something different and it's a real character um, and I thought, you know, performance is very strong all the way around. But definitely recommendation for me. Would you recommend it as well? Again, it's a mild, it's a mild non-recommendation, but there are there are things to enjoy. And especially, you know, if you are into things like like production design and visual effects, there are some things worth checking out here. Just just know going in that you're not going to get any real surprises from the plot. And when it comes time to start bumping off characters, it's going to pretty much follow the, the sci-fi cliches in that regard. It would be unfair to say I hated this. It, it it would just it's just like that this was being sold as like high prestige and it doesn't it, it doesn't quite get there for me like i i, I see this as you know a, a good distraction movie like if you're just kind of bored on a sunday afternoon um and you want to just watch something you know maybe it could work as like a date night movie just just just, just two hours to, to have something on while you're either paying attention or doing something else like like it's it's not offensive. It's not not terrible. It's not even really that bad. It's just not that good. 